So thank you for joining us. What brings you to ICO 2016? Um, Open Hydro are the manufacturers of tidal turbine called the Open Centre Turbine. It's a bi-directional permanent magnet ring generator that's horizontal access. Um, we are based in Canada, France and in Ireland, which is where the company is actually based. So we have a bit of an international perspective. We've attended every one of the ICOE events so far and find them absolutely uh, essential to doing business and also finding out the state of the industry. So delighted to be here. So what is your technology? So the technology is a horizontal axis tidal turbine. So it's an in-stream turbine that's deployed on the seabed directly, works on both stages of the tide. At the moment, we're looking at engineering efficiencies. So we have a cantilevered blade, which has allowed us really to, to improve the manufacturing efficiency of the machine. At the moment, we're deploying turbines in both France and in Canada. So they are two two turbine arrays of two megawatt machines. So four megawatt arrays going into the Bay of Fundy in Canada at the Force site, and also the Pampol Brea project, which is on the north, north coast of Brittany. So really, we're looking at developing the subsea systems to get those turbines interconnected and exporting electricity onto the grid. So how does your technology differ to some of the other offerings in the marketplace? So it looks very different. Rather than being a nacelle with a number of blades coming through it with gear boxes inside of it, we've gone for a very simple design. So we only have one moving part, a rotor, which is in the centre of the machine. We have no lubricants, no oils, no um, uh, cooling. We're seawater cooled. So very simple, very robust design. And really, we've gone from first principles from the marine environment. What we want is something that will be, um, have some longevity in the water and that we can leave for a maintenance period of five years. So a very simple, very large design, 20 metres in diameter, takes in a very large swept area, which really allows us to maximise on the extraction of kinetic energy. So where are you in the development cycle? So we're looking at actually standardising the product. So we've been testing at the European Marine Energy Centre um, from 2006. We've been generating onto the grid there from 2008. So we have a really good um, level of information and generating information from the platform that we have up there. Um, we've got a number of thousands of hours of data from that machine. That allowed us to then scale up the machine. So we first went to a one megawatt 10 metre machine, which we deployed in the Bay of Fundy. We took learning from that and we're now at a 16 metre two megawatt machine. Um, so really looking at developing that standard product, getting to something that we can mass produce and really looking to moving towards industrialisation. What are your optimum locations for situating these machines? So we're looking at a number of locations. Effectively, we want offshore sites with good tidal resource, and by that I mean numbers of metres per second to allow us to get that kinetic energy out. So in terms of yield and return, we're looking at fairly high energy sites at the moment. We're looking at a number of sites globally. Obviously, you want access to grid, accessibility in terms of the consents and permits. Our main focus and main markets at the moment are France, the UK and Canada. So there we're looking at up to 900 megawatts in development of projects. Um, so we have a number of commercial projects and a number of development projects that we're taking through the development process so that we have a pipeline that allows us to look at where we're going to deploy turbines in the future. So effectively those three markets are, are where we're most focused at the moment. And are you funded on those 900? We're looking at how we're going to do that in terms of the building project out. We very much see that we've got to have longevity in pipeline, so we need to be developing these sites now due to the lead times it takes to actually get kit in the water. So you need to be looking at your site feasibility studies, grid studies, onshore consents and offshore consents. And the timescales for those are quite significant. So we established ourselves as, as almost a development company as well as a tidal technology manufacturer. And we're working on all of those projects to ensure that, that the industry has a future. So next steps? Next steps for us are really taking the learning from the two demonstration arrays. So that's um, Cape Sharp Tidal in the Bay of Fundy and um, the Pample Brea project, which is a project with EDF in France. What we want to do is understand how two turbines interact. We have designed our own turbine control system, which will sit on the seabed, effectively a subsea substation, um, a really critical path for the industry. And what we want to do is build these two projects get the learning from them and look at actually industrialising um, the manufacturing of turbines that we can sell into projects. So we have a very clear business plan for the next couple of years and we're hoping we can achieve all of those goals as we move forward. So how's the conference been for you? 
Very good. I think there's a lot of changes in the industry at the moment. Um, I think we need to keep the political focus globally. Um, certainly understanding how the industry is going to develop and where we're going to see investment in the future is going to be critical. But very positive, uh, and it's great to see so many developers and so many new devices coming online, particularly in the wave industry. What does the industry have to do now in order to become an industry? I think it's very much about getting kit in the water. So it's proving that the machine can live up to its warranties, live up to the guarantees that you're giving to your customers. So for us, it's very much been, we need to have technology in the water that we're getting data from so that we can actually take that data into due diligence processes and be able to sell the technology. And I think once we're at that stage, you'll see vo at volume production, which will drive down the costs and get us to a levelized cost of energy that's competitive with other forms of renewable. And I think that's absolutely critical at the moment marine energy is very expensive and we need to move towards actually reducing those costs which can only be done at volume when you have a machine that you will fully understand you know how it works and you can offer the guarantees and warranties that people who are buying your technology will need so there needs to be a policy and a financial framework in order to support it Absolutely. I think the uncertainty around CFD allocation and certainly where the market revenue streams are going to come from has not helped the industry. Um, but we're all working together to make sure that that becomes clearer in the future so that that investment's allowed to come on board. So exciting times. Very much so. I think the industry has lost some of its momentum in terms of the, the political will has fallen away. Um, but certainly we're now looking at um, keeping the industry buoyant, keeping everybody's knowledge levels very high in terms of marine energy and getting these projects in the water so that we can prove that marine energy and marine technology is viable. So what does the future hold? I think it's, it's very exciting. We've done some preliminary work looking at technical viability of sites globally. And you're looking at around something around two billion euros worth of sales for open hydro alone if every site was technically feasible. The opportunity is there. It's really now about opening those doors and ensuring the opportunity is deliverable. But I think it's certainly very exciting times for marine energy and we just need to make sure that we keep working towards that. Fantastic. So thank you for joining us. Thank you.